Well, hey everybody, this is our story about fixing our um, 2005 Airstream International, and we're second owners and had some uh, belt line corrosion that was kind of building mostly from the previous owner. But we were going to try to do some things to cover it up, and um, using the factory belt line techniques that the newer Airstreams are using. And we're at the local Airstream dealer, and we're just looking at how it was done by the factory before doing any of this and took some photos of, you know, the approximate uh, detail and, you know, the heights, uh, references, end caps, um, just the alignment for the most part and how far things drop down from the um, rock guards and kind of just um, took mental note as to what was going on and uh, realized it was going to probably really help us. So we packed up uh, five sections of 16-foot uh, extruded aluminum, brought them back to the house, and my lovely wife and I decided to uh, do some hands-on and take the majority of the afternoon and put this on. So some of the parts we started out with was a 1 8 bit, a spacer for depth, the factory recommended uh, rivet, sickleflex sealant, and of course Corrosion X, which is the only thing we are told by factory that seems to stop um, and cease the foliform corrosion. So we went around, wrapped the entire, wiped it all down and put uh, a little bit of um, Corrosion X all the way around. And we're starting here on the at the entry door and putting our first uh, pilot holes and getting our first holes set up. Uh, we do put a, um, force some Sikaflex inside there. So it pushes all the way through and seals the hole. And then um, go ahead and do our um, recommended rivets that go in the, the center position of the extruded aluminum. Now that we have the starting point, it kind of wraps around to the same point on the other side of the um, street side. And we continued on just um, getting our levels and then we continued drilling. And every five to eight inches is what we ended up doing. And we go in between the actual uh, existing rivets. And um, essentially from this starting point, was able to work uh, around first to the front under the panorama windows and um, each time sealing it up with Sikaflux and just kind of watching how we're doing it as we go. We had a little bit of a trick here uh, wrapping around the front because we had the um, rubber hold downs but we were able to actually mount it just above and keep the uh, almost factory angles uh, as we saw at the dealership. And here's as we mounted the aluminum above the hold downs. It pushed them out a bit, but still worked out okay. And just watching what we're doing as we're slowly wrapping this around, getting our angles and mounting it just so it looks just like it does in the factory and has all the symmetricals. As you can see here on the back side, we all around the belt line, we seem to have a um, fair amount of filiform. And it's kind of darkened here, you can see, because we use the uh, corrosion X on it, which actually does darken it up, but it does seem to stop and cease any kind of further progression. We uh, kept the front first uh, section wild so we could align it as we went through. And um, anyway, this is just kind of an example of the, the things we're hoping to hide by doing this uh, belt line trim. And um, we can't get it all, but we can probably hide about probably 90% of it, except for there. <laughs> anyway, um, we um, also were told to drill between the factory rivets um, just as best practice and we marked them off every five or ten inches in certain places and held down with our hand as we pushed and did the rivet so it had a very very f secure firm um, pressure on the um, unit um, to make a solid connection. Every so often you have to um, put like another um, rivet because um, either the, uh, the back end is a little bit um, 
recess, so we want to make sure it looked almost like it was just hugging up along the side and, of course, sealing it up with Sikaflex, um, which uh, did a great job of sealing all the way inside to the original hole and covering the new hole um, all the way around. You can see here by just doing this trim, made a marked improvement, at least as far as our unit. Um, and as we moved along here, we kept the front ends a little wild so we could adjust down our up to make sure the straight line was going all the way down from the eyesight. We had to cut uh, around 10 to 12 foot sections to cover the side, uh, which we uh, cut on a miter box and sized it up and kind of came right up and uh, you can see the seam right there, but the um, when we line them and put them in separately, they'll pretty much align, and you'll never notice it with the uh, chrome trim on the insert. We'll adjust that perfectly before we actually start sealing the left side there. Now as we progress, we just tape these up to get a kind of an eye line on adjusting for the door. We noticed the door um, had a little bit of a drop in it, so we could actually make up for that uh, appearance by simply just putting the two ends together and then uh, making a bridge piece and adjusting just so that both uh, far and left side, right side would adjust. And you can see here that these little inserts had to be broken off so they wouldn't uh, get in the way of the, um, the existing rivet and push it up. So this actually keeps it real nice and flush. Now cutting and sizing the, uh, the door piece, you got to take off a quarter inch for the uh, end caps. And we, um, with our factory pictures, we measured to see where it would look, come up. So we have to take off a half an inch on that full length to um, uh, compensate for those two end caps. see here we put a little bit of Sikaflex on each side there to actually have more of a bond to the end caps. Now with the end caps actually installed and um, the Sikaflex will grab onto those and do a great bond on them on both sides here. That's what that looks like. All right now we're going to do a just a little bit of trim here and um, utilize the inside scotch cowl um, chrome insert it's got a special scotch adhesive on the back of it that uh, once it sticks it probably won't come off um, as long as the backing is clean it's sticking to so just got that measured up there we'll cut it back and try this one little strip as our first piece to be installed Looking pretty good. And we'll just pull this off. And just do the rest of this all around the rig. Probably one piece, because it's a 100 foot foot up for that uh, flexible chrome strip. 